So today at MWC, Poco has just launched its latest, freshest, budget-friendly smartphone, which still packs a proper wallop. It's the Poco X4 Pro. And if you've already seen my review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro, well, chances are you'll get a serious case of deja vu from the Poco X4 Pro 5G. 6.67-inch AMOLED screen, check. Snapdragon 695, check. 5,000 milliamp battery, yep. 108 megapixel primary camera, got one of those. So is it a case of same thing again? And is the Poco X4 Pro gonna be worthy of your hard-earned cash? Well, let's whip it on out of the box, take you on a full tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. And uh, yep. So in here, you've got naturally one Poco X4 Pro 5G. You've got yourself a mighty 67 watt fast charger. Good bit of USB cable action. As usual, you've got yourself a bundled condom case to delicately envelop your Poco X4 Pro and keep it safe from harm. And while there's no screen protector pre-installed on the smartphone, Poco has at least bundled one in the box so you can slap that on too. And that right there is all the goodies you get chucked in the box. So now, let's check out the fun. So let's start with the design and that sense of deja vu we had with the specs is certainly carrying through to the actual look and feel of this smartphone as well. It's a 6.67 inches, so certainly quite the handful and once again you have those flat edges on board just like what you had with the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro. But thankfully like the Redmi phone the Poco X4 Pro is still quite comfortable to clutch helped along by the fact you've got the rounded corners and quite skinny bezels surrounding that display. The weight of 205 grams it's certainly no lightweight here you definitely feel it when it's stashed inside of your pants. And that is quite a heft considering here on the Poco X4 Pro you've just got your standard placky back so yeah just usual polycarbonate finish. And the X4 Pro does come with the option of the laser blue or Poco yellow finish but this is just the bog standard laser black of course which shows up really nicely on camera. It's not at all really bloody difficult to film especially as it's a nice shiny finish on here as well. And it does pick up greasy prints and stuff uh, rather easily, but thankfully that dark finish does at least mask them. But I do quite like the way that the light reflects off that back end. Kind of looks like a pair of searchlights or something. It's like you're about to sit down and watch a 20th Century Fox film. But one distinctive feature of the Poco X4 Pro design versus that Redmi smartphone is the camera chassis, which as you can see there, is absolutely wanging huge. Definitely takes up a massive portion of the arse end of this smartphone, but thankfully doesn't jut too far from the surface either. So at least if you're using the Poco when it's lying flat on a surface like a desk or whatever, it doesn't rattle about the place because of that camera chassis. Now because the X4 Pro sports that standard plastic back, chances are it's going to scratch and scuff rather easily, but at least you've got that uh, condom case bundled in the box if you do want a bit of added protection. And then you've got Gorilla Glass 5 up front on this display, so hopefully that will help you avoid any scratches and scuffs even if you don't slap that screen protector on top. And the phone is also IP53 splash resistant as well, so it can get a bit moist without too much trouble, but I wouldn't take it in the bath with you or the shower or anything, because chances are that's going to f*** it right up. So now let's have a gander at the software and again strong deja vu because what you got slapped on here is Android 11 not the latest freshest Android 12 so same problem that the Redmi Note 11 Pro had and of course you've got MIUI version 13 slathered on top of that. So hopefully you're not waiting too much longer for that Android 12 update. I wouldn't expect many OS updates beyond that either maybe Android 13 that'll probably be about it. But at least this latest incarnation of MIUI is actually pretty bloody nice. You've got a mostly stock Android vibe with the likes of the Google Discover feed, the apps tray, your notifications bar. But then on top of that, you get some unique MIUI features. You've got the likes of the control center, which you can drag down fast access to a load of your features. I quite like some of the bonus Xiaomi apps you get chucked on here as well. The likes of the security app. This can just generally assess the health of your smartphone, help you clear up any files you no longer need, etc, etc. Top tip, block list, very helpful if you keep getting annoyed by spammy twats. And the Game Turbo feature, very good, we'll be hitting on this later. Of course, MIUI smartphones have their problems as well, one of them being the sheer amount of crap where you get pre-installed on these things. So you've got TikTok, you've got a load of shitty games, you've got your LinkedIn's, you've got your Facebooks, you've got all this bollocks. Thankfully, the vast majority of this you can just uninstall. So block puzzle, you can piss right off out of it. LinkedIn be damned. Thankfully, you do at least get a respectable amount of storage packed into the Poco X4 Pro. So I've got the 128 gig model. You can boost that to 256 gigs in some regions at least. Probably just as well, considering quite a lot of space is taken up by the system files and of course all of those bloody apps. And if we poke open the SIM tray here on the Poco, well, you can see here we've got space for a single SIM card on one side and on the other side, 
another SIM card slash micro SD memory card. So you can't have two SIMs and a micro SD memory card in there at the same time, but at least you've got that option. And then security wise, you've got an edge mounted fingerprint sensor built into this here power button. And so far seems nice and responsive, no issues at all. Just tap your digit against it and boom, you're straight in. And there is also a face unlock option as well if you want to use that as an alternative to the fingerprint sensor. Not as many options in the security screen compared with some rivals, so you can't have it only working when your eyes are open, for instance. But Touchwood should work all right. It normally does on these Poco blows. Yeah, and as you can see, they're super swift. So now media and what you've got slapped here on the Poco X4 Pro is a 6.67 inch AMOLED display. Again, suspiciously familiar to that Redmi smartphone with its full HD plus resolution 2400 by 1080. It's another proper stunning budget panel. It's nice and bright on the top levels around sort of 700 nits it reaches. So certainly I have no trouble seeing what's going on outdoors. Anime fans in particular should get a kick out of the really poppy color output as well. Fully customizable, of course, in the Poco's display settings. As you can see, they're set to vivid by default, but you can scale it back if you like to as well. And you can control the color temperature from within here. So yeah, animated, fair, and just generally vibrant uh, movies and photos as well. They really shine here on the Poco X4 Pro. Absolutely stunning stuff. Got strong contrast as well as usual with an OLED display. It's nice deep blacks and really good for your sort of moody affair. So this phone definitely recommended for any movie fans, anyone who just likes to kick back with Netflix on their smartphone in bed or whatever. And when you do go full screen on the tiny little selfie orifice camera thing uh, to sort of intrude on the action. And if we dive on into the display settings again, head to refresh rate. As you can see there, it is stuck at 60 hertz by default. You have to manually bump it up to 120 hertz if you want to take advantage of that fast refresh rate. And you've also got a stereo speaker set up here on the Poco X4 Pro as well, just like that Redmi Note 11 Pro. Oh look, there it is, right there in fact. So let's see if it's once again a winner. Buffering circle purgatory of doom. And the only way to sort them out was by closing them and reopening them. So yeah, once again, a respectable output here on the, uh, the Poco smartphone. It's good to see a stereo speaker output on a more budget friendly smartphone. On that top volume, everything comes through fairly clear as well. Not much in the way of tinniness and certainly loud enough to hear what is going on in a fairly noisy environment. And like a lot of budget blows, you do have a headphone jack up top here on the Poco X4 Pro so you can get jacked in that way. Otherwise, there is Bluetooth 5.1 support as well. Now performance, what you got packed inside of the Poco X4 Pro. I was going to say the Redmi Note 11 for a second there because it's exactly the bloody same. Again, it's the Snapdragon 695 chipset backed by either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. This is the 6 gig model and no surprise to see again very very similar benchmarking scores compared with that Redmi smartphone. Pretty solid stuff considering this is a 600 series on a budget blower and the everyday performance certainly has been absolutely fine here on the Poco. Uh, everything just loads up straight away. Everything seems to run nice and smooth especially with that 120 hertz refresh rate. But of course as always the true test of a smartphone's grunt is by getting a bit of gaming on the go and what better a test than Genshin Impact. Certainly one of the beefiest most demanding Android titles out there and as usual you do have the game turbo mode on board to help you out. In this latest incarnation it's so much nicer than it was before you get actual descriptions under each icon to actually know what each one does rather than having to just bloody guess. And of course my personal favourite the voice changer feature is back on board. And for a bit of Genshin Impact, we will definitely need to boost it up to the performance gaming mode, give it every chance it's got. And once again, gotta say, like that Redmi smartphone, strong performance here, certainly for a budget blower around this sort of price point. Genshin Impact played well, admittedly on the lower default settings, so you don't get those bonerific, crisp, gorgeous visuals that you do on more capable handsets, but the frame rate stays reasonably stable, the occasional little judder here and there when there is a bit of action going on on screen, but nothing too bad at all. The game is perfectly playable. Definitely helped along by the fast touch response rate and everything here on the smartphone as well. And what's more, you've got that Liquid Cool Tech 1.0 Plus as well, which does help to keep the smartphone nice and cool. It gets ever so slightly toasty on the back end after a good long Genshin Impact session. That's as bad as it gets. And because I actually had a little bit of extra time to spare as well, I did have a quick blast on Call of Duty Mobile as well. An absolutely flawless performance on the higher detail settings right there. And certainly the network connectivity, no issues at all. The Wi-Fi signal stayed strong. You got full 5G support on here as well, courtesy of that Snapdragon chipset. I still absolutely sucked ass, as usual, but that's down to me, not the actual Poco. Now battery life, 
Well, you'll never believe it. You've once again got a 5,000 milliamp battery stuffed inside of the Poco X4 Pro, just like that Redmi Note 11 Pro, I know, right? And it supports that 67 watt turbo charge, fast charging shenanigans as well. So once that massive battery is finally drained, just plug it in be powered up again in a jiffy. So now the grand finale, let's check out the camera tech here on the back end of the Poco X4 Pro, which is spearheaded once again by a 108 megapixel primary sensor. And no surprises at all held by the camera tech. It's once again, the exact same setup as what you get on the usual uh, Xiaomi smartphones. You've got that AI mode, if you want a little bit of help, just boosting your photos, making them look a little bit more attractive, depending on what you're actually shooting. I just believe that knocked off as quite often colors can look rather unnatural with it. They all sort of bumped up to a rather sickly sweet degree. Here's a handful of test shots taken with the Poco X4 Pro and as you'll see similar results again to that Redmi Note 11 Pro. Outdoors in good light when you'll get sharp photos with natural looking colors and even in softer light those tones don't take too heavy an impact. Detail levels are still pretty respectable and yet you got that obligatory night mode which can help to brighten up a dark scene just a little. As long as it's a static affair, moving subjects do often still come out quite fuzzy, especially if they are actually quite fuzzy in real life. As usual, we've got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter you can swap to if you want a more pulled back view. Oh, and yes, if you're a fan of this sort of stuff, you've got a 2 megapixel super macro lens as well for really diving in close. All the usual camera chicanery is on board. You've got the likes of the portrait mode, the night mode, which I just mentioned. You've also got your super res 108 megapixel mode as well, which is quite handy if you want to take a shot of a distant subject and then crop in later without losing too much detail. But then again, like the Redmi Note 11 Pro, unfortunately the Poco X4 Pro can only shoot video at up to full HD resolution 30 frames per second. Very disappointing when a lot of rivals do offer 4K resolution video capture these days and the footage just just looks a bit flat here. It's not as crisp as a lot of the competition, even with good light and, and indoors as well, things look even softer still. So gotta be honest, the Poco is best avoided if you wanna shoot a lot of home movies, even though the audio pickup is actually pretty decent, even in rather blustery weather. And last up around the front end of the Poco, X4 Pro, you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. You've got some HDR smarts on there. It's gonna shoot pretty decent selfies, even in quite strong light. And you've got the portrait mode smarts with only a little bit of bulkiness around uh, the edges there. And if you wanna shoot a video with that front facing camera as well, it once again tops off at full HD at 30 frames per second. So not the best capabilities in the world. Audio pickup seems absolutely fine though. Even in quite a gusty time and place like this, and there you have it, my lovelies. That in a nutshell is the Poco X4 Pro. It's basically the Redmi Note 11 Pro, which was a perfectly good budget blower. So excellent. The only real issues are with the camera tech and basically the video recording chops are very, very poor indeed compared with a lot of the rivals. But the performance is strong. Battery life will be excellent, guaranteed. Uh, and of course, you've got that lovely MIUI experience if that's your bag. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more of the latest and greatest tech. There'll be lots more coming out of MWC 2022. Uh, so definitely check out all my other videos from the export and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.